Hello everyone and welcome to the 12th lecture in the Streamlit series. In this video, we will be talking about session states in Streamlit. So what is session state and what it is used for? So se session state is basically a dictionary and the use is that it retains values throughout reruns, which means that if you go and uh, you know try to rerun a Streamlit code, some of the values which you want it to be saved and not changed across reruns, it will be saved. This functionality was not available till now because once you hit something, you click a button or let's say you uh, input a text, the entire script used to run uh, or yeah, rerun. But now in session state, you can save some values, some variables. And you know, even when you rerun the script, those values will uh, still remain the same. So those these things are very, very important in uh, writing project level code. OK, so let's say how to view a session state. As I said, a session state is nothing but a dictionary. So the way you can view a dictionary is, let's say st.write st.sessionState. Okay. Now if I go and first I have to start the command prompt. So as you can see, our uh, canvas is ready. Our browser has opened and you can see over here an empty dictionary. Okay. So this is your session state because we haven't initialized anything in this uh, in the dictionary in the session state dictionary dictionary. That's why it is empty. Now let us go and add certain elements. So you can either write st dot write or if you remember the magic command, you can just write this. Okay. Now I'm going to initialize a session state. So the way you initialize a, se se a session state is you can say if Let's say you want a key name. Okay, so obviously if you are having a dictionary, we need to check whether whether a key exists in the dictionary or not. So if key in st dot session state. Now obviously we printed session state over here st dot session state, and in that there were no keys because it was an empty dictionary. So obviously on the first run it will work. Okay, so if the condition is satisfied, what I want you to what I want the streamlet to do is I'm going to say st dot st dot session state and then you pass the key and then pass a value. Let's say I'm passing one and now I'm going to have my session state again printed. OK, so I have saved this and if I go over here, obviously you see first there is nothing. So Obviously, the, uh, the script will run from top to bottom and when it will come here, it will say till now nothing has been initialized. So we will again get an empty dictionary. However, it will see that uh, if this condition is satisfied. So obviously, this condition is not satisfied. OK, so I need to write here. Not in not sorry. OK, so I forgot the not. So if key not in this, then what do you know? What, what do you do? You come over here and you say session state key equal to one. So you initialize a session state with key equal to one and then finally print the session state. So what I expect is again an empty dictionary and then one element with key as uh, the key and value to be one. OK, so I have to remove one S from here. It was extra. So as you can see, the output is here. Obviously, the first time it was an empty dictionary because till that time nothing was initialized. Then this if condition was run, this if condition was run over here, this if condition, and then we had this. Now what happens if I rerun this? So according to the logic, the keys are going to remain intact, which means since we have not changed anything and this condition will not be satisfied, whatever. So if you talk about here, in the second run, which means if I rerun now, this should have the key, a key uh, inside the session state. And again, after that, this condition will not be satisfied because key is in the session state because of the first run. So this condition, this here, this line will not be operated. And then again, we will print the same thing. OK, so if I go and rerun and since I can't rerun like this, either I can you know hit here and then say, uh, select rerun or I can just print R or press R. If I press R. You can see something has appeared and if I open this, you can see the key is already present, which means the value of the key has been uh, saved across reruns and it doesn't matter if I continue to hit R, R, R. You can see over here it is I'm hitting R. It has been rerunning the entire code, but these two do not change. Why? Because there is no logic changing it over here. OK, so this is how you initialize. Now, let's say you want to change. So I initialized key. I initialized key to be equal to one. Now I want to change the value of the session state. So first I'll print the session state. 
I'll always be printing the session states and now I want to change it. Okay. So if again key if let's say key in st dot session state then I'm going to say st dot session state key simply how do you change it you change it via writing like this and now again you can print st dot session state okay so what happens here obviously the first time it will come over here from the last rerun key one key was equal to one and then it will see if key in session state yes it is there in the dictionary so it will come and run this line it will say okay now change the value to two and then finally when you print this session state the key should have been two it, it should have changed to two okay either you rerun from here or so if i am going to rerun you can see this will remain the same but this will change to two so i'm going to hit r you can see over here this key remained one but this key changed to two so now if what what if i now rerun again now this should also change to two you can see now this also changed to two so it's very important to understand the session state is basically used to remember a variable throughout reruns okay so now we are going to see how we can delete a session state okay so till here we had a, se a session state key which was equal to two now we are going to see how to delete it but before that first i'll print it so the way you delete it is first you check whether that key exists or not so if you so if i'm going to say if key in st dot session state i'm going to say the way you delete it is you say del st dot session state of the one that you're going to delete so i'm going to delete key okay and again just to verify i'm going to print session state so i have to rerun and then see so as you can see initially the key was two but after that it has turned to empty because we have deleted this key now what if i rerun this obviously this will also go away. you can see now both of them have empty why because now this has run twice so this is how you delete uh, one session key now let's say you want to delete it in bulk okay so for that i have to first have two extra session keys that i'm going to write here so as you can see i have mentioned two session states okay k1 k2 and each having a value 10 and 20 respectively now if you want to delete more than one the way you do it is obviously you can write del then first one del then second one but that will be very time consuming so the way i am going to do it is i'm going to use a for loop okay so the way you use it is let's say for k in st dot session state dot keys okay del del what st dot session state of k k okay but before that i have to print it and print it here again so now i'm going to see what should happen is first here we should add these two states then obviously delete both of them and then show an empty over here uh, session state so i'm going to rerun as you can see over here k1 and k2 has been added due to this due to this so this line printed k1 and k2 then it went for all the keys and deleted all the keys and now what you have is an empty over here as you can see over here so you have an empty so now we will be talking about the input widget key as session state so what happens actually is let's say you have a button or a text input so let's say i'm going to say st dot session state okay and then i'm going to say let's have a text input so i'm going to say st dot text input okay and then i'm going to have something let's say a name okay and then i'm going to mention key so when you have a input widget like so let's say text input or let's say you have a button wherever you have on click function and all those things okay wherever you have all of those things whenever you pass in the key okay it will be mentioned in the se session state so i'm going to show you how so if i rerun you can see over here the name has been added even though i did not touch anything the name has been added in the sessions list because this line was run over here even though nothing has been mentioned by the user the word name the key name has been added in the session state so this might be useful at times now what happens if i 
write let's say datum obviously when i write datum and let's say press enter to apply if i apply it what will happen the script will rerun which means now this will also show the name which is datum and this will also show the same thing so i'm going to go over here and hit enter oh it's already uh, sorry so just i click outside it went there so you can see over here the name has been uh, changed so if i can also change over here so instead of datum i'm going to say dl so now both of them have changed so this is how it works okay so whenever you have a input widget and you put a key variable or a key, a key uh, argument it will automatically go and uh, place itself in the session state so this is one thing that you should know and last one is the callback this is sometimes i think can be useful let's say in the forms so actually there was an example that was given in the documentation in streamlet and i think that is very very important because forms are something that we will be using at least not in machine learning deep learning so much but if you are using it for other purposes you will be using forms a lot so what you can do is you can have a callback okay now this callback can be from many other uh, let's say i think st dot uh, button also has a, all, all many other functions also have it so wherever you have this callback what you can do is it, it you you can actually go and run a function so in the callback on the on click you can go and run a function and whenever you have a function it will give you the different variables the different values from the form can be given to that function okay so let's see a example i'm going to say fall call back so this example is also there in the documentation okay you can go and check so i'm going to say st dot write and here i'm going to say st dot write mm, oh i'm already given st dot write okay so st dot session state session state and then my slider so i'll have to mention what my slider is and here also i can go copy this paste it over here and i'm going to say my callback so my underscore callback okay now what you can do is you can go over here and start the form so with st dot form okay you can go over here and then pass the key so this will be key will be over here my slider uh, sorry my form my form now what you can do is you can go and say slider underscore input equal to st you don't have to write form because we are already inside the form we have to say slider now once you are inside the slider you have to give the label first so this is going to be my slider you have to give the min value as zero you, it can be anything i'm just trying to follow the documentation five and then you can give the key so this is very important the key is my slider so you can see this key is over here it will be saved inside the uh, session state over here which can be accessed like this also you can even do this which you are more which i have actually shown you okay you can do this also but in the documentation it was given in that so i was given you can do like this also okay now what you can do is you go you can go to the second one and let's say instead of callback it should be checkbox my bad okay checkbox not callback because here is the slider and then you needed checkbox now you can go and say checkbox underscore input equal to st dot checkbox and then what you can go and do is first you need to give a label so i'm going to say yes or no and then finally give a key the key is going to be my checkbox my check box okay so this is there and finally we need to give the form okay so i'm going to say submit button is equals to st dot form submit button so once you're giving that now you need to do something like label so submit and finally you have to give an on click function on click so on click what do you want you want the form callback to be called form callback now if you remember whenever you have a callback function the script the thing function is run first and then the whole script is run okay so submit button is equals to st dot form and all of those things now if i'm going to run this you can see over here even if i change the values nothing will be printed the script won't rerun okay why because we are inside a form if you remember and once i'll be hitting the submit button this will be uh, invoked which means 
once I'm going to give anything over here and once I hit the form button, these keys will go inside my session state and then this will be printed and then the second or to say your uh, loop will run. So let me change it to 10 and if I change anything, you see nothing will happen. It will continue remaining the same. Okay, the state is going to be the same. No reruns will happen. You can see no rerun has happened. If I change this also, no rerun will happen. But once I hit submit, you're going to see that form callback function will be called. And you can see the two values are printed over here. Let me change this. Nothing changed. From yes to no, nothing changed. Submit changes. So this is one thing that you also need to remember is that whenever you have all of these input widget type of things, slider, checkbox, button, a button has on click, uh, all those things, wherever you have some key or some on click stuff, you can use these callbacks and you can use the session states. That's all that I was trying to say. So I hope you understood the video and bye.